here with Kat Kerr, and Kat has brought a great technique for creating textured backgrounds. And these are absolutely amazing. I mean, the possibilities of what you can do are really great, and that's just by mixing various things into a resin, that's right? That's right, sky's the limit. I mean, you can leave it plain if you want to, or you can add dyes to it metallic powders, you can just use acrylic paint. I threw glitter in there. I threw just powders in that last one for a nice matte finish. There's tons of ways to use this stuff. I'm so excited, but how do we actually start off this process? Okay, well the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually mix up um, two equal parts of the casting resin. And so I already have one poured out here and I'm just gonna um, pour out the second one. And you do need two equal parts. So Are you, I'm just, just kind of eyeballing, eyeballing it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be science okay. or anything like that. And so you do have to work quickly because this stuff, it cures really fast. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pour one into the other. It's a little cloudy at first, but once it starts to clear up, I'll go ahead and pour it on top of this embossing uh, folder that I've already taped down. So I would like to point out that A, that was really fast, mm -hmm. which I find surprising, mm -hmm. but B, uh, isn't that gonna ruin your embossing oh, folder? Oh, no, it is not. It is going to peel off completely. It's not so going to damage it. So you haven't pre-treated this with anything. Nothing. You're just pouring Absolutely. it directly on there. And you're working on top of wax paper, wax obviously. Wax paper, right. And so normally it takes about 10 minutes to cure. Okay. Um, but I already have some that's ready okay, here. So, so we'll move this over to the side. The and when it cures, um, it comes out as thin or as thick as you want to pour it. So this is like a I sheet say, of plastic. Not only that, but one of the things that's fascinating is if you look at these two pieces, because embossing folders have two different right. sides, usually a side that pushes in and a side that pushes out, you actually get two different patterns. That's right, it's awesome. I Double mean, for the why not? Somewhat. Why not? And so I want to go ahead and add some texture to the outside of this uh, mini shadow box. I'm not going to measure, I'm not big on measuring, so what I like to do is I'll just take this sheet, just hold it up against um, this little shadow box shrine if here. If you wanted to trace that, could you use a pen to write on this? Oh, can yeah. you write on this surface? You can. I mean, it's slick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use, you know, a, a permanent marker or something okay. like that. But yeah, you can absolutely do that. Just for people who are more careful. Not anybody <laughs> here, of course, but you know, somebody who might be. And you see, it's pretty easy to cut. Yeah. And so I normally like to go ahead and cut all of my sides out. And then I'll just cover the entire surface uh, with the resin sheets. And okay. how do you attach it? I'll go ahead and take some just matte medium. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty generous with it. And you could use any gel medium. It oh, doesn't yeah. have to be a matte one. You absolutely. Could use a gloss medium. Whatever you have on but hand is good. probably a heavier one. I'm mm -hmm. guessing something a little thicker. Something, you know, any, it's going to work for you. And so I'll just go ahead and put that off to the side and cover all of the, all of the sides. Now, if we were going to mix in like the paint or the dye or anything that we were talking about before, you would do that in the cup before you poured or you would do it after the pour? Um, you would do it before. Okay. It, it comes in a two-part system. Um, and so you would actually I'd put... I'd throw my glitter directly into the yes. cup and and then I would pour. That's right, okay. that's right. And so now I'm preparing the surface um, for the next uh, step, which is just painting. And I'm just adding some gesso to it. Okay? For people who don't know what gesso is, what is it? It's just a primer. It, it prepares the surface for the for the paint that you're going to add to it. It and gives it grip. Yeah, is what I always think. yeah. And especially because the resin is a little um, slippery, and so you want to use that gesso. And so this one's already. Um, it already has. Uh, gesso on it and I'm gonna go ahead and just take an acrylic paint. And you're not cleaning your brush and you're oh, taking your time. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of different ways you could paint this. Now you're obviously using a very thick coat, but you could certainly, you know, use a thin coat, use many colors, paint a pattern. Sky's the limit. Lots with this of other stuff. choices. Go in a couple different layers. Right, and the right. nice thing about using a box is the way that you're holding it because you only have to cover those exposed sides, you can get your hand into it. Oh yeah. Are you worried at all about getting paint on the inside of it? No, not at all, because I'm gonna actually cover the inside with some paper. So this one's already dry. I went ahead and already added some um, some just cardstock to the, to the inside. I have one last strip to put on here, so I'm just gonna take a glue stick 
and I'll just put it on the inside. So when you're home, do you do you really just sort of like smear it on, throw it in oh there, gosh. don't think about it too much? I don't think about it at all. And why why don't you use a wet adhesive there? Why do you choose a glue stick? You know, to be honest, I think it's faster. It's not as messy as using a wet one, so it works good for me, but everybody has their own preference. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the outside of this with some uh, metallic wax. And this is really, um, it's really smooth and it's going to highlight all of those textures. This and is a all great of that. way to bring out the texture. I love it. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, I'll do that to all the sides. When you're, uh, you know, gluing this on, I never really did ask about this, but I'm wondering, do you worry at all about like, does this square match this square? Oh, or you're, not you're at just all. throwing it on there? Not at all. I mean, you can if you want to, but it's, you know, I'd rather just go ahead and have fun. And so one of the final things I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this white pen and just some, add some uh, decorative element to the box Drawing itself. I can do, yeah. I like it. Yeah, and just it just adds a little bit of extra. And so this one is all ready to go. And you can leave this box just the way it Does is. This, uh, I mean, this wax, it's dry. Like, it's not going to come off on now, your hands. Yeah, it takes a couple okay. minutes for it to dry. In the beginning, yeah, it's, it moves a little bit. And it looks to me like you've also added some of the wax on the inside I of the box. I did. And what I did in that case is I just actually wet the brush a little bit. I dipped it into the, into the wax and just put it on the inside to give it that nice mm. final touch. And so, again, you can keep it like that. Or you you can decide to put the um, put the smaller one into a larger shadow box if you want to. How did you do the background of this? Same box? exact way that I did the smaller one. I added some casting resin to an embossing folder, added gesso, painted it the same exact way. And instead of lining this box with paper on the inside, you painted it, and it looks like the outside of the box has right. paper. That's right. That's right. And so it just gives it a little bit more interest. And I could finish this piece up by taking a little resin piece. I can glue it in the inside. I can also take just a sticker and put it on the bottom of that and add some rub-ons. And then I can just glue that one right to the center of that. And again, you're keeping everything consistent by adding the same gold distress field. Right. I think it's funny that we're calling gold distress. <laughs> but you're, you're adding gold distress, right, to the resin cast yep. piece mm -hmm. that's in there, mm -hmm. the gold wings. And this is something that I bet other people didn't realize. You've actually added some dimension onto right. everything with some foam adhesive, mm -hmm. which really, again, lifts it and elevates it right. out of the box. Now, how do you choose your words and phrases and stuff like that? Like I see it says this day. Yeah, Does right. that mean something to you? Uh, you know, I've, I definitely wanted to, you know, I want the person to look at it and, and feel something when they look at my artwork. But definitely when I was making this piece, it was all about enjoying the moment. So I, that's why I picked that's this, this day. day. This day right then and there. Yeah. And so I did make some other ones using the same exact technique um, with the backgrounds. And, you know, the great thing about these sheets is that you can use them on on um, canvases, on journal covers, and all different ways. Well, I was gonna say, this shadow box that's here, I particularly like the way that there's a face because that looks to me like an image that might be out of a vintage mm -hmm. magazine or something right. like that, but you could use the face of someone you know to oh, really yeah, personalize absolutely. it. And mm -hmm. she's wearing a lovely necklace and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm.